This question says, given this expression over here, solve for a. So the first thing I realize is that there is a denominator. As soon as there's a denominator, you need a um, you need to then go find a lowest common denominator. So I'd put all of these over one. Can we all agree that the lowest common denominator would be a? Okay, so that's going to be a. So what that means is if I go write this out a little bit bigger, I need to turn all of these denominators into a. So I can multiply this by a, but what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. This one I don't need to do anything because it already has an a at the bottom. This one I'm going to multiply by a, and what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. If we then go rewrite it, we're going to end up with a squared over a plus 64 over a equals to 16a over a. Now some learners, I've seen this in the past, and I used to think about this when I was like in earlier grades when I was younger. I would be like, yeah, but now I can just cancel this out and I can just go cancel this a out. But then you're just gonna get back to here, guys, and that's not really the point, okay? Because what we're trying to do is get to this point where we realize, ah, all of the denominators are the same. Now, in mathematics, when you have an equation where all of the denominators are the same, you can leave the denominator. So now we end up with a squared plus 64 equals to 16a. Aha. Now we can just solve this like a trinomial by just bringing the 16a over to the other side. So we end up with a squared minus 16a plus 64 equals zero. Okay, now you can either solve this with a quadratic formula or you can solve this using factorizing. This one will factorize quite nicely um, as a minus eight and another a minus eight. You can just pause maybe and check that you agree with me on that, but a times a is a squared, and then negative eight a, negative eight a plus 64, so that works out perfectly. Then we can just solve and we'd see that a minus eight is zero, therefore a would be equal to eight. Now we gotta take that and somehow do this, and it's just like, what? Okay, so there's not much we can really do here. Like you can't take out a common factor. You know, sometimes we get those questions where it's like 3x plus 3x minus one. And then you would typically, and you'd have like equals to 15, for example. And then what we would do here is you would break this up into, um, you know, like three to the x and then three to the negative one. And then we would have a common factor over here of three to the x. That's normally what happens. But if you're to do that here, it won't work because you're gonna end up with a two to the x and a two to the negative x. That's the problem. So watch carefully, guys, because I've actually seen questions like this quite a few times um, so that you could get this in any test or exam that you do. So what you do is the following. You say two to the X plus, and then you do break this up, okay, into two to the six and two to the negative X. That part there, you should be comfortable with what I've just done there. Um, if not, then let me try explain. So let's say you had A to the X multiplied by A to the Y. If you do exponent rules, what does exponent rules tell me? Well, let me start with more basic. What is A2 multiplied by A3? No, it's not A6. If you said that, just think carefully. What you have to do is remember that these two would add to become five. So we could also add these two to become X plus Y. Okay, but now this is a mathematical property now. So you can go this way and you can go this way. Okay, so can you see that over here, we have this part. You see how we've got the two parts at the top here. But then what I'm doing is I'm rewriting it as the individual parts, and that's what I did over there. You see that? See how I changed it from two to the six minus x, and I changed it to two to the uh, six and two to the negative x, in the same way that you would have a to the x plus y, and then that can just become a to the x and a to the y. Ah, okay, good, hope you understand that. And so then this would be equal to 16. Now you can't take out a common factor here. A lot of you are gonna look at this and you're gonna be like, hmm, could I do something there? No, you can't. But what you can do, and, and, and I've seen these questions many times, so if you practice enough, you will get used to these. This here, how can I take that negative? How can I change this from a negative to a positive? Well, think about this. If you have x minus one, or let's rather say x minus two, how do you change that to a positive? Well, you can say one over x2, right? You understand that property. If you have like um, a to the negative three, then that can become one over a to the three. Yep. 
Okay, so what could we then do with this? Well, what you could then do at that is you could say two to the x plus, and now this is already at the top, so just leave that over there. And then you could take this down to the bottom as two to the x. Now some of you are like, Kevin, where's the one? My bro, my bro, where's the one? You know how earlier you showed us when you had this one over here, you said one over? Yes, good question. So that one is only there if there's nothing else to fill in the space. For example, it's pretty awkward if you take this and then you put it at the bottom because look here, you've just, what's at the top? There's nothing there. So when there's nothing there, you put a one. But in this example, there already was a two to the six over there. So that's like a placeholder. So you don't need the one, okay? And now all of a sudden, look at this guys. I think we are in business um, because this expression is starting to look a lot like this expression. Now, did you know two to the six, if you go type it on your calculator, that is 64. Now we're really starting to look like it's similar to this. It's actually identical. Okay, so check this out, guys. Oh, I love maths. It is beautiful. And some of you are like, okay, cool. That's great. I'm glad you enjoy maths. But Kevin, I just want to get the question done, please. I want you to now look at these two expressions and see what is the same and what is different. Okay, so can you see that they both have that 64? They both have that 16. So that's all the same. Um, can you see that this one is an A? but this one is a 2x, and this one is an a, and this one is a 2x. So what we can do then is we can, we can do the following. We can just make a rule. We can say let the 2x, let's rather let the 2x be equal to a. So then we end up with a plus 64 over a equals to 16, okay? Now we know how to solve this. We already solved this earlier, and what did we get as our answers? Eight. So what we can then say is that a is eight right? We know that. But we also just said that 2x is also a. So we can say that 2x is then going to be equal to 8. Oh, Kevin, this is so cool. I know, right? And then, <laughs> and then I hope that's what you guys would be saying right now. Um, and then um, we can then go solve this. Okay, so for example, you could see that 8 is the same as 2 to the power of 3. And then the 2s can cancel and you end up with x equals to 3. And there we have now solved for x.